The best way to learn something is to recreate it. First, you reverse engineer it, then recreate it. And I've done this over and over again. And it's by far the easiest and the best way to learn. So in UE4, since 4.24, you have a new time of day level template that you can use, which includes dynamic lighting, the new sky atmosphere actor, and in 4.26, there's an introduction of the new volumetric cloud actor. But before you start using this new time of day template, there are a few important things that you need to understand. The set of actors that are used in the template are dependent on each other to make this work. You have the directional light, the sky atmosphere, the skylight, and the volumetric clouds all working together. And a couple of these actors are connected together. And if you've never used this before, there are a few things that are confusing. First, you have the volumetric cloud actor, and if you disable it, you still have clouds in the sky. And this is from the sky dome mesh that was used previously before volumetric clouds were introduced, but they're still here in the template. And if I go ahead and disable the sky dome mesh, we remove the material type of clouds that we used before, but then we have the black void on the bottom of the world. But if I re-enable the volumetric clouds, we could render the clouds without the sky dome mesh. Also, if you go ahead and spawn inside the map, you will notice a fade in effect that happens every time you spawn. So if you use the time of day template without understanding how some of these actors are connected and how they work together, you will have a hard time trying to make them work to create what you want. And what if you don't want to use the time of day template, but instead you want to recreate it from scratch using the similar setup and using the sky atmosphere, the directional light, the volumetric clouds, and the skylight and set this up yourself. So instead of having to figure this out, I'm going to show you how. And I'm going to make it even better by introducing a few more things that the template is missing. So this way, you'll have a way better self-created template where you know what everything is doing and how it was done. So let's begin. Let's go to File, New Level, and start an empty level. First thing we need is a ground plane. The ground plane that was used in the template is inside engine content. To get to it, you need to enable engine content by clicking here on view options and enable show engine content. And then you will have engine content folder appear inside your content browser. Then inside engine content folder, inside map templates folder, insert the static mesh template map floor. And then I'm going to zero out the mesh location so it's in the center of the world. Then there's also a preview mesh that's inside the template. I am not going to use it. I'm not going to insert it and keep it in the map. But if you want to, it's inside the engine content folder, inside the engine meshes. And here's the mesh right here. And you just drag it into your map. But you usually don't need it inside your level for whatever environment you're creating. You're not going to use this. And there's also text rendering actors, which I'm not going to insert. And you don't need those as well. Now, the one thing that is very important is a human reference scale to give you an idea of how big your environment is and a way for you to judge scale and dimensions. For this, I always use UE4 Mannequin Mobile. This is freely available from the marketplace. You can download it and you can include it inside every project. And I will link a video in the description or I will post a video within the blog post so you can see how it's done if you haven't seen it before. And then we are ready to begin inserting the light actors. I have the place actor tab docked right here on the bottom right next to the details. But by default, it is usually right here on the left hand side. So I just simply dragged this tab and placed it so I have a bigger perspective viewport. We need a directional light. So go to lights and insert a directional light. I'm going to go into the details panel and we need to modify a few properties to match the template. First, set mobility to movable to make the light completely dynamic. And then set intensity to 1. Then scroll down and under atmosphere and cloud, enable atmosphere sunlight. This will connect the directional light to the sky atmosphere. Now we don't have sky atmosphere inserted yet, but once we do, it will be connected automatically. And we'll insert sky atmosphere in the next step. But enabling this will make them work together. Then enable cast cloud shadows. This determines if the light should cast shadows from the clouds onto the atmosphere. And then I'm going to scroll down 
and change the cloud shadow extent to 100. This is the radius of the cloud shadow map around the camera in kilometers. And inside the template, it is set to 100 kilometers and the default is 150. So I'm gonna just put it down to what the template has. And next we need a sky atmosphere. And this is the new atmosphere rendering component introduced in 4.24. That gives you the ability to simulate accurate atmosphere, including the auto space views. So go back to place tab, under visual effects, insert sky atmosphere. And because we already enabled atmosphere sunlight inside the directional light, the sky atmosphere and the directional light will be connected to work together. And the only property that is changed inside the template for the sky atmosphere is the trace sample count scale. Default is one, and in the template it's increased to four. And this scales the atmosphere tracing sample count, which is the quality level. So I'm just gonna increase it to what the template has, and I'm gonna trust it that it looks better. And now, since we have the directional light and the sky atmosphere linked up together, they will work harmoniously. So to change the direction of the sun, the directional light, and see how it affects the sky atmosphere, press Ctrl L and move the mouse. And you can see that it's now working together. The next actor we need is a skylight. Go to Place Actors, Lights, and insert a skylight. The skylight will help to illuminate the indirectly lit areas of your environment, things that the sun cannot hit directly. So it is a very important lighting actor to add. Go into the details panel and you want to set mobility to movable. You want to enable the new real-time capture option. This is introduced in 4.26 and it will help to show you more accurate skylight capture in real time. So this helps to eliminate problems with the skylight from previous versions of UE4, not capturing and showing you more accurate representation of what the skylight is doing, specifically when using with sky atmosphere and volumetric clouds. Then disable lower hemisphere is solid color. Now by default, lower hemisphere is solid color is enabled, but in the template it is disabled. Enabling it allows for accurate scene lighting on a planet where the ground blocks the sky. So if you had a landscape, or geometry around the player and inside the playable area, you will probably want to keep it enabled. And disabling it can be useful to approximate skylight bounce lighting. So this is something you want to experiment with by having it on or off. Usually when I have a landscape, when I have some geometry around the player, I keep it on, which is the default. But for the sake of this tutorial and to keep it true to the template, I'm gonna go ahead and disable it. And then let's go ahead and save. I'm gonna go to File, Save Current As, and save it inside one of my folders. And this will be a new time of day template that I will now use. So we're not done yet, but I just wanted to save so I don't lose the work. This next part is optional, but I do wanna talk about it and how to add it because it is inside the template. And this has to do with the sky dome mesh. So in 4.26, with the introduction of volumetric clouds, you no longer need to have clouds using a sky sphere and a material that mimics and places the clouds into your environment. This is how it was done before, and with the volumetric clouds, you no longer need to do that. However, if you don't want to use volumetric clouds and you want to use the previous method, you can do so at any time. You can also combine them. And there's an added benefit of using the sky sphere with the material because it gives you the bottom surface of the world rather than the black void that you would usually experience without the sky sphere. Now a little later I'm gonna give you another way to add color for the bottom of the world so you don't have that black void. But right now let me show you how to add the sky sphere and make it work just so you know how. Let's add a sphere first. You will find a sphere to use inside engine content and basic shapes folder and just drag it and place it into the world. You can also find it under place actors, basic and this sphere right here. This is the same thing. So then we need to go to details panel and set this up. First, change the mobility to movable and increase the scale. 
This needs to be a very large mesh. I'm going to set X to 1 million, Y to 150,000, and Z to 1 million. Then scroll down to Collision and set Can Character Step Up On to No and Collision Preset to No Collision. And then under Lighting, you want to disable Cast Shadows. And then we need to apply the sky material, the one that's being used inside the template. You'll find it inside Engine Content and inside Engine Sky folder. And it's this M Sky Time of Day material. Go ahead, left click, hold and drag and just apply it over the material element slot inside the details panel. And this will apply the material. Now it doesn't look quite right, so we need to tweak a few more properties. Under rotation, set X to 90 degrees. And Y and Z will be left at zero. And then for location, you want to set X and Y to zero. And Z needs to be negative 7,300,000. And now the sky sphere and the sky material will look exactly like it does inside the template. Next, let's add volumetric clouds. Go back to Place Actors, Visual Effects, and Insert Volumetric Cloud. Now, because I'm going to be using volumetric clouds, I don't need the sky sphere and its clouds that are part of the material. So I'm going to go ahead and delete the sky sphere and just use the volumetric clouds instead. And then later on, I will show you how to introduce a color for the bottom part of the world using exponential height fog. All right, so since we added the volumetric clouds, I need to go back to the skylight and adjust a few more properties that I changed in the template. The first one is cloud ambient occlusion. You want to set that to on, enabled. And this will give some self shadow into the clouds and make them more real. And then you want to control the distance with cloud ambient occlusion extent. The default is 150 and I'm going to change it to 100 to match the template. And then let's go back to volumetric cloud and set a few settings there. The first one is tracing start max distance. This is the maximum distance of the volumetric surface before they start accepting tracing. The default is 350 and I'm going to change it to 200. So I'm guessing it's going to improve the performance by making that amount lower. Next we have view sample count scale. I'm going to change it to 1.5 and then reflection sample count scale. So for this I'm going to increase it to 4. And again all of these values I'm taking directly from the template. All right so now let's deal with the bottom part of the world and fill in that with some color. For this we're going to use exponential height fog. This is a great actor to add to your template so you have some added fog inside your map. Do note that exponential height fog is not necessary with the sky atmosphere because the sky atmosphere is capable of rendering its own fog. So you don't have to use it to add fog. But I like to use it because it gives you more control and it will fill that black void with a color. So go to Place Actors, Visual Effects, and insert Exponential Height Fog. The first thing that you want to control is the fog density. So you want to lower this value. I'm going to lower it to 0 0.005, very low value. Then we need to change the color for fog in scattering color and directional in scattering color. So for fog in scattering color, you want to change this to black and scroll down and change the directional in scattering color also to black. So this will take on the properties of the sky atmosphere and it will be more accurate. So you won't have to adjust the color of the fog to match the sky atmosphere and what it does to the environment. Now, it is very important that if you're going to be using this, you need to enable support sky atmosphere effect and height fog in project settings. So go to edit, project settings, search for sky atmosphere, and make sure you have support sky atmosphere effect and height fog enabled. I already have it enabled for this project, but yours will be disabled and you need to go ahead and turn this on and you will have to restart the editor. So make sure you save your map. Next, we need a player start. Right now, if you push play, you will spawn from the point of view of the camera and we need a proper play start. So go to place actors, basic, and insert a player start onto the ground plane. And now, if you spawn, you will always see this fade in effect inside your map. 
This is controlled by auto exposure, which is always enabled in every new map you start. And this is how your eyes naturally adjust when you walk from bright environment into a dark environment or from a dark environment into a bright environment. This is distracting in the beginning of a project and I always disable it. Then if you want to adjust it later, you can, but this early on, it just gets in the way. So to control it or to disable it, we need a post process volume. Go to place actors, visual effects, and insert a post process volume. Then go into the details panel, open up the exposure tab, enable minimum and maximum brightness, and set both of those to one. Then you will scroll down further to post process volume settings and enable infinite extent unbound. This will make the post process volume universal and it will apply to the entire level. Now the entire level will get dark because you have no auto exposure to compensate. So to fix this, we need to go back to the directional light and increase its intensity. One is way too low. So I'm just gonna go ahead and increase it to five. And now if you spawn into the map, you no longer have that fade in effect and no auto exposure is taking place. And if you press Ctrl L and move the mouse, you will begin to adjust the directional light position and change how the atmosphere is reacting to the time of day. You can go to volumetric cloud, begin adjusting some of its settings. And this, in my opinion, is the perfect dynamic time of day lighting template with a few extra actors added that you could start from. You know what everything is doing, how everything is working together, and from this point, you can start creating your environments. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a like, subscribe, and if you want to learn more about how to use Unreal Engine 4 as a complete beginner so you can begin to create your own environments, I have a tutorial course, UE4 Fundamentals Volume 1, The Essential Beginner's Guide to Getting Started with UE4. And then I also have the second volume that will teach you everything you need to know to begin creating landscapes in Unreal Engine 4. You can download both of these courses on worldoflevelddesign.com store.